Heavenly Father, we thank you that you give us such opportunities where you want to speak to us, where you want to remind us, and sometimes where you want to challenge us on how we live in our individual lives, in the, in the corporate lives, and also our responsibilities in the places where you have placed us. Father, help me as I stand before your people that I may communicate clearly and that your people may listen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, my brother, uh, Reverend Paul, for inviting me once again. I don't need to introduce myself again because I've been here very often. I'm a very proud product of this institution and I always want to associate myself to, to it. Um, greetings from my family, from my wife. She knows that I'm here. She works in Mlago Hospital and our children. Greetings from St. Andrews, Bukoto, where I am attached, but also from Buikwe, where I work. My full-time job is in Buikwe. I'm sorry I'm late. And the reason for my being late is because of the poverty in Uganda. The Ugandans are so poor that they have so many cars. So I couldn't maneuver very well through the traffic. But also I came late because of the undisorganized Ugandans, because they make very narrow roads that you cannot pass. But I'm here. I was given a topic, defeating pride. But remember, in my introduction, I said I'm a proud associate of this institution. But I'm not going to talk about the positive, I mean the negative, the positive part of pride. Because even when the VC said, stood here, he said, you made us proud. I'm not talking about that pride. I'm, not, I'm talking about the negative pride. Now, what is pride? I took a dictionary definition. It's a high opinion of one's dignity, one's importance, one's merit, one's achievement, or even its priority. So you can regard any of that higher, actually sometimes higher than yourself. That is what is called pride. This could be cherished in mind. Actually, pride starts in your mind. What we see outside is just the outcome of a product that is already incubated and hatched from inside. Actually, you can be a silent, proud person so that your pride is not manifested outside, but deep down, it is there. So it is cherished in the mind and or displayed in bearing, in conduct, in speech, sometimes even how you walk. Now you see some, some young people, the way they walk as if there's a spring in them. And you wonder, he can really walk properly, but he walks like something is, is lifting him. Oh, when you are young, we are fond of putting our collars, we, we, we put them uh, up, or the, the shirts we put there, uh, very many lines, or nowadays you see people putting up their trousers into the stomach. All that, or some of that, is really sheer pride. It is a manifestation of what is inside. But also, a simple explanation is it's a state of being proud. 
And the other one, it's the opposite of humility. So those are the descriptions of pride. Biblically, pride is a sin. And the sin that is repentable. Something that you confess or you need to confess and repent. And brethren, Abarokuri, they repent of pride. I looked through the Bible and scanned through to look for this word pride. It's more mentioned in the book of Proverbs. Where Solomon is warning us and warning people. Here in particular, he was warning the Israelites against pride. In Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13, he says, I hate pride and arrogance. Proverbs 11, verse 2, he says, Pride brings disgrace. Whereas the opposite of that is humility brings wisdom. Proverbs 13 verse 10 says, Pride brings quarrel. Now you see, it's not you who quarrels, but you make others quarrel. Because of that false picture that you put on yourself and the opinion you put above any other thing or even any other persons. So King Solomon says, pride brings quarrels. Proverbs 16, 18 says, pride goes before destruction. Yeah, the best example is when you get on a bicycle and then with pride you put off your hands and then you go <laughs> as if you're flying. The next thing you know, you are down. Pride goes before destruction. Proverbs 29 verse 23. Pride brings law. It puts you law. You see, sometimes you exercise your pride even before people who are higher than you or who are better than you. And they look at you and they put you low. I also don't like people who are proud. I put them low. But even God would put you low. Isaiah 25 verse 11 states it also clearly. It says, God will bring down the proud. Now here, he was referring to the Israelites. At one time, they were very arrogant and very proud because they were given laws, they were given kings, and God himself was their God. But they disobeyed and considered themselves higher than the kings that were given to them. They disobeyed the laws that were given to them. They even asked to make their own God. They were proud. And God brought them down. In the New Testament, I only quoted First Peter chapter 5, verse 5b. It says, God opposes the proud. He really does. He opposes them. But the parallel of that, it says, he gives grace to those who are humble. So, what causes pride? I listed a few things here for us. The first one I said, it is the self in you. The self in you is the source of pride causes pride in you. 
You look at others, you despise them, then you're proud. So one cause is yourself. In you comes out this pride. Somebody you usually uses the word puff up. Something in you puffs you up and you become bigger than you were. And, and you see puff up means that you are not the real, but something's puffing you up like a balloon. It puffs up. I'm sorry to say this is a, a characteristic of people who don't have very big sizes like mine. They want to puff up. So the self in you tells you you are small. They don't see you. The short ones do the same. You are too short. They, they cannot see you. So they will do all sorts of pride so that they are seen. So the self in you. Number two, other people will also cause pride. Now the reading that was read Jeroboam had a company of people who were his age. Now, according to the reading, it's not mentioned here, but from my reading somewhere, Jeroboam at that time was 41. It's not easy to find a 75-year-old being proud and arrogant. But this young man of 41 put himself, or put people around him, young like he was. And what, you know what they did? They puffed him up. They said, don't listen to those things. Don't do that. And you know how peer pressure can do that very well. So Jeroboam fell into that trap. So other people can cause pride in you. I always see my dear sisters and, do and their daughters, no sisters here, you are my daughters. If one boy told you, even not sure about what he's saying, I said, ha, you are beautiful. That simple word, you are beautiful, will puff you up and you don't see anybody. Already pride has come in because of other people. Sometimes you put on a dress and somebody says, you are smart. And then the walking changes immediately. <laughs> Even the eyes also change because of somebody. And sometimes these boys, they are not true about what they are saying. <laughs> yes, in most cases. But you see, other people can make us fall into this sin of pride. The reading made it very clear. The other person who fell into this trap was David. In 1 Kings, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 18, after he had killed Goliath, now they were women. This time they were women. They, they started saying, David has killed thousands, but Saul has killed tens. And then David was puffed up. And he fell into the, the sin of pride. The other cause of pride is self-defense or defensive mechanism. When we are studying psychology, we are taught this. I'm a teacher. I did teacher education. So I know this very well. Sometimes we are proud as a defense. You don't want us to see your weaker side. So you puff up with pride. And you see it even in classrooms. Those people, no, let me not go that side, but there are people who are proud because they are hiding something. They are defending something. They are defending their shortcomings, their incompetences, they are not trusting themselves. Actually, even the ugly ones, 
defend themselves. And they are proud. And you look at somebody, and there is nothing good on this person, and he's very arrogant. And then you say, where do you get it? I was going to say she is, but even he, they are hiding something. Defense mechanisms. The other cause is not listening to advice. Again, the reading that we read, Rehoboam. He went and sought a device from older people. And they gave him appropriate advice. But the Bible said he rejected in verse 8. It says, but Rehoboam rejected. That is pride. And often, young people, we do this. We go or you come to us, some of you come even to us as priests and ask Musumba, this, this, this boy has proposed. Should I go on? And, and sometimes we pour ourselves out. For me, I'm always honest when it comes to that because I don't want anybody to be great in marriage. So we are honest. And we tell you how, from my experience, I don't think you match with that guy. Or, uh -huh, I look at that guy, he's looking for something else. And I tell you honestly, and this girl, you know what she does? She goes and says, hmm, Musumba doesn't want me to take this. <laughs> now, if you reject my advice, don't report me to your boyfriend, because he may beat me up. Now, not listening to advice is a sign of pride, but also it causes pride. And Jeroboam did that. And the last cause that I wrote here is ignorance of God and his word. It causes pride. Ignorance of God and his word it will cause pride. Now, my last segment, how should we defeat pride? Now, these tips I'm giving are mine. Some of them are from reading. I beg that you consider them. Number one, surround yourself with the right people. People who are not going to puff you up. People who are not going to, to push you up. When you were in Namutamba, I come from Namutamba, where your chaplain comes from. When, when people take you up, they have a tendency of leaving you. Yes. They puff you up or they, they push you up. In Namtamba, we already said, they put you up a popo tree. A popo tree is a very weak tree as far as climbing is concerned. Now, if somebody takes you up and he leaves you there, the next thing is falling down. Surround yourself with the right people. Now, Jeroboam had the wrong people around him. Uh, it's Rehoboam, sorry. He had the wrong... Maybe they, they were young, they were arrogant, they were short-sighted. Put yourself or surround yourself with the right people. Number two, if you want to defeat pride, listen to the right people and the right advice. Yeah, because they could be right, people, but with wrong advice. So, listen to the right people and the right advice. I think Jeroboam, what he needed, he needed to balance with the people around him. He needed to have both young ones and possibly older ones. But he only listened to the young ones. You people, Listen to us. Yes. 
this gray is not for nothing. And where you are, we have been. Yes, and where we are, you are coming. <laughs> so listen to us. But if we, what we are saying is right. Number three. This one I read. First Peter, chapter five, verse six. First Peter, chapter five, verse six. It's the second verse after what I read that God opposes the the proud. But this one, chapter 5, verse 6, it says, humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. That is the gist of my message. If you want to defeat pride, if you want to defeat arrogance, humble yourself under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due times. So, the answer to the topic that I was given is Simply that one. And I wrote it here in capital letters. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Now, when you are under the mighty hand of God, he will prune you. You know pruning? For you, you don't know because you, have not, you are not in the era of gardening. You know, you think everything comes from the fridge and the supermarket. Yeah, but for us, in Namutamba, we prune tea. Every after four years, a tea plantation has to be pruned. Now, when you are under the mighty hand of God, he will prune you of any excesses. He will, and he does. And I'm glad that since I accepted him on the 27th of July, 1980, in Namutamba again, he has continually been pruning me. Any pride, any sins of arrogance, he has been pruning them. And he still does. And he still does. And you know what he will do? He will lift you in due time. Now, this puffing up is not in the right time. Yes, it is not. But God will lift you at the right time. You remember Psalm 1. It says, the fruit, I mean a tree that bears its fruit in its own season. And lastly, if you want to defeat pride, pray for yourself. Yes. Tell God that there is some puffing up that is coming. Something is pushing me up. Lord, help me not to be proud and lift me in due time. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for reminding us because these things we know, we have read, we have been told, we have been preached to. Help me, Lord. Start with me but also with your people listening. That if there is any seed of pride, that Lord, you may prune it. Humble us before your arm and lift us in due time. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name.